Sahib. And uh, the speaker for today's session is Dr. Jaspreet Kaur. She is an associate professor and she has done her BSc from IHE, uh, Delhi University, MBA and MPhil in business administration, PhD in marketing. She has also done an advanced course, online advanced diploma in digital marketing. Uh, from Narsi Munji Institute of Management Studies. And at present, she is an associate professor at uh, Business School Pearl Academy, Global University System. She has also served as an associate professor at Trinity Institute of Management, the, uh, IP University. Uh, she is visiting faculty, she has got visiting faculty assignments from various institutes. Her research experience, she has run different projects, done, uh, done projects from Ministry of Rural Development by Global Pathfields Research Consultancy in 2017. She has been on editorial review board, member of journal Academy of Strategic Management Journal, reviewer of journal IJBIR, IGI Global, editorial review board of journal IGBER, IGI Global, reviewer of Asian Journal of Marketing, Scopus Indexed. She is at present guiding five PhD students. They are from different universities, MIT University, Aligarh Muslim University, and Chitkara University. She has got different publications, a huge number of publications in national and international peer reviewed journals. To her credit, she has two books, which she has published, or CRM, A Customer Perspective uh, from Tech Press, Another one is Marketing of Services, Global Vision Publishers. She has got different articles in books and she has published uh, in books and magazines. She has presented uh, her uh, lectures. She has been invited, uh, she has uh, given invited lectures in different conferences and workshops. And it's a large number I think she has got. And she's got different honors and awards, certif certification of accredited management teacher from IAMA, award, awarded teaching and research excellence award for the outstanding contribution to teaching and research by Grabs Educational Trust in year 2015, best achievers award in ninth international scientist awards on engineering, science and medicine on September 2020 in Trichy, at Trichy in India, Best Researchers Award in ITSR Foundation Awards in 2020, organized by Institute of Technical and Scientific Research, Jaipur. And she has been an invited lecturer, uh, like, uh, giving invited lectures, and she is a constant FDP invited faculty. Uh, and she has delivered lectures in FDPs. I think her 2020 was full of FDPs she has done. She has uh, given FDP lecture, invited, hand handled FTP as such on qualitative data analysis and Vivo software. And uh, she has given lectures at Ramanujan College, at Dayal Singh College, at Aditi Mahavidyale, then Gujarat National Law Universities, and they are N number. I think she is a very appropriate uh, speaker for the uh, for this workshop be, be, uh, because of a huge experience, and she'll be uh, it will be a hands-on training session. As we all know, like tell me, I forget, teach me, and I may remember. Involve me, and I learn. This is how the theme or the essence of our workshop goes on. So I invite Dr. Jaspreet for the hands-on training and lecture followed by hands-on training session. Dr. Jaspreet, please. You may share the screen. Okay, uh, I, I think there's someone else sharing. Uh, you may share. Yeah, it's yeah, it's shared. You may put it on the slideshow. Uh, in morning, Dr. Jaspreet has given us some links for downloading the softwares. I'll be putting up in the chat box and in case some of the participants have got any difficulty in downloading, they can directly interact with uh, Jaspreet, uh, Dr. Jaspreet Kaur here on the uh, Zoom and uh, she'll be, uh, she'll be uh, guiding you for the whole of the complete session. Thank you so much. Dr. Jaspreet, please. Uh, uh, is at the top, like slideshow uh, uh, at the top, you may, uh, 
enlarge the screen. I'm audible, just speak. Yeah, that's okay. That's, you have shared your screen. Yeah, is it visible? Yeah, yeah, it's and visible. Have, uh, Perfect. Uh, I request the participants to kindly mute their, mute them. Uh, Dr. Jaspreet, you may start. Uh, are you here? Okay, okay. Um, Sunita, yeah. I think ma'am, yeah, ma'am was not yes. audible. Now maybe yeah. she has typed in a chat box also. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you are audible, oh. Dr. Jaspreet. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, yeah. Am I audible? Okay, so yeah. Okay, so I'm just uh, I'm just sharing my slide uh, slide and um, it's full screen. Can I start? Yeah, you may please start and make it uh, on. Uh, yeah, it's shared. Yeah, it's complete. Yeah, thank you. You may please okay, start. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Point if I'm not audible, please do let me know. Um, you can call me up and tell me. Okay, so it might just happen uh, in the call. Okay, so I'll be speaking about systematic review and meta analysis uh, of what I ask the participants on the chat, please. Uh, are you aware of what is the systematic literature review? Am I audible to everyone? Yeah, you are audible. Participants, please okay. uh, kindly respond in the chat box. <laughs> please let me know if you know the systematic literature review technique. Please let me know that. Yeah, because if you don't know that, I'll start with that. In so chat box, some of the responses are there as uh, no, and some are there for yes. So um, I, I think I'll quickly take you through Okay, so no is coming more. I'll quickly take you through systematic literature review because that is theoretical. Okay, and then we will come to the software. All of you, have you downloaded the CMA and Meta Essentials? CMA trial version or Meta Essentials? Any one has to be downloaded. Has that been done? Has that been done? Okay. Okay. Yes, it says so. I I suppose so. Uh, my eyes will be on the chat. Okay, and of course uh, on on the PPT too. So uh, let me start with the uh, uh, first of all. Thank you, uh, Shivaji College for uh, for. Uh, I mean, I, I'm honored to come back to Delhi University to take an FTP. And ma'am, thank you so much for that. Uh, that long introduction, I, I really feel elated after that. So um, uh, biostats or biosciences that we are talking about, meta-analysis is a very, very crucial technique. Systematic literature review and meta-analysis is a very, very crucial technique. Let me tell you, although I am from the management domain and I teach it to the management domain, this is one concept which came from the medical sciences. I repeat, Meta-analysis actually came from the sciences and Cochrane is, is a, a major contributor to this technique. Okay, so it, it primarily comes from the sciences. Now let me come to a systematic literature review. What is a systematic literature review? It is aggregating all the research which has happened in the past 20 years on your domain and finally concluding something. So let me say, I'll give you a very simple example of what is a systematic literature review. Now, right now, uh, the only thing that is worrying me is the, the, the corona vaccine, which is going on from the past one week. So the news says in Norway, 
with the Pfizer uh, vaccine, there are some. Something's not on mute. Somebody's not on mute. There's a disturbance. Can everybody please mute? Yeah. So the Pfizer uh, vaccine, which has come, 29 people, uh, I think, are dead as per news. Okay. Uh, there's another country yesterday, I don't remember. It shows that the facial paralysis is happening after the vaccine and in quite a few. So every country is reacting differently. Now, just suppose that I want to bring the Pfizer vaccine over here in India. Okay. What do I do? Uh, should, I, uh, sh should I listen to the company which says that my vaccine is very effective? Should I listen to the Norway patients where there are deaths? Should I listen to another country's patients where <coughs> there has been a paralysis? And paralysis is not a very small side effect, like you know, when you when, when you get a when you get a typhoid vaccination. Uh, okay, uh, when when you get a, a typhoid vaccination over, even then you have a little bit of fever, a rash. Uh, we understand side effects, but death cannot be a side effect. Yeah. Ma'am, somebody is not on mute. Sunita, ma'am. Yeah, uh, uh, actually, there's a problem in noise, I think, and they are, uh, uh, participants are on mute, ma'am. Uh, okay. Let me check. okay. Yeah. Fine. Uh, okay. So um, now, when this vaccine comes to India, suppose next year the vaccine is coming to India. Of course, we have our own. A dear biotech vaccine working, but if 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 suppose a vaccine comes to India, which study should I take as conclusive? The study done on the Norway patients, the study done on the UK patients, the study done in African countries. Should I bring the vaccine? Should I use the Pfizer vaccine in India or not? This decision, this decision can only be taken when I. See Summarize all the effects. The effects of Norway, Doctor Summer, uh, Doctor Jaspreet, there's a, uh, a problem in Norway. I think. Hello. Positive. The finally, I say. Please type yes. in the chat box. I yeah. think you yeah. need to. Uh. Yes, ma'am. Spree, there is a no, ma'am. <clears throat> you are not uh, audible. Your internet connection is not stable. I think. Um, Jaspreet, ma'am. Hello. I think there is a problem in internet yeah. connection. Doctor Jaspreet, there is hello. Uh, Doctor Sunita, Doctor Denu, maybe we can ask her to re-log in. Yeah. yeah, if that helps. Ma'am has written a message. Give me five minutes. So maybe we can wait for five minutes. Uh, she has said she'll rejoin. Okay.
I, I think she'll be re, uh, logging again. Okay, ma'am. Okay, we can wait. Um, Sunita, ma'am, can I, um, in the meantime, can I make some announcement regarding yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 Rin. Sure, sure. Meanwhile, she'll good join. Afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, once again. And uh, uh, I just wanted to convey this message to all of you that uh, tomorrow we are having two sessions. One is by Dr. Kriti. And this is followed by the validatory session, which will also be hands-on, depending upon the uh, whatever you learned yesterday about the R software. So you must have downloaded the R studio, and on that, uh, uh, sir is going to uh, take the session. So it will be followed by a uh, you know it is a validatory session only. But uh, uh, what I expect maybe some of you whomsoever wants, you can share your feedback either in the form of whatever writing or you can share a small 20, 30 second video if you want. So this is what I wanted to convey, maybe through mail or through WhatsApp group, which we have made or on my personal window, you can drop your video. So it would be nice if some of you can share your feedback. And as far as, of course, tomorrow we will announce uh, how we are going for the certificates. We will uh, go for the feedback form, which you have filled. We will go for the attendance, depending upon all five sessions. Hello. So this hello. is what uh, I wanted to uh, convey the message. So please okay. drop okay. Uh, your name. Okay. 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 Uh, good afternoon, Renu ma'am. Yes, 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 Minakshi, Dr. Minakshi. Yeah, yeah. What I just wanted to request you, can we have uh, some recordings of these uh, sessions? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. See, one recording I have already shared because it's on YouTube uh, live stream only. And the second I'm going to yes. share today only, yesterday's recording. And this and, will and one more thing, see, uh, Sometimes the uh, link is there on the uh, Zoom link. And if we don't note it, can you send those links on the WhatsApp group? It will be, uh, you know, great help. Because like yesterday's session, R was very good, but we need to practice it. And we need those uh, kind of, you know, um, references. Yeah, definitely. It is there. It is, see, I'm going to share. Actually, it needed some kind of an editing in the initial part. It says uh, it's on the YouTube live stream. So I, I'm going to share that link. Definitely. The one I have already shared, that is the, I think, session two. So I'm going to share yesterday's session also, session three, and today's also. Definitely. Okay, okay. Thank that you so much. And another uh, a small request. Can you also share it on the WhatsApp group also? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Just sharing on Zoom only. Definitely. We'll do okay, that. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, and what uh, about tomorrow's session? One more thing which I wanted to ask you people. Maybe uh, sir would like uh, uh, some of the participants to share and do hands-on training along with him. So I would request whomsoever wants to volunteer for that uh, so that simultaneously they can also, uh, you know, practice on our studio software. So request you people to kindly give your name for that also, along with the uh, name for the feedback responses. Yeah, ma'am. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. sure, ma'am. changed the connection somehow. Okay. So I'll, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll just repeat what I was saying. Okay, am I audible now clearly? Yeah, you are. Okay, fine. So uh, we were talking about systematic literature review. I'll repeat my example. I'll make it quick. Uh, in systematic literature review, what we do is we summarize all the findings. Okay, we summarize all the findings. Uh, have I shared the, uh, is my slide showing? Is my slide yeah, showing? Your slide is, yeah, your slide okay. is there. And I'm, yeah, thank you, ma'am. And I'm not changing it. I'm explaining an example, then I'll change it. So in systematic literature review, what happens is you summarize all reports. For example, let me take the COVID vaccine. The COVID vaccine has been uh, applied to patients in Norway, has been applied to patients in, in, in different uh, uh, cities of UK, uh, has been applied in the United States is going to be not not the Pfizer one another vaccine is going to be is already has already been started applied uh, two days ago okay in India so now different COVID vaccines are having different COVID reactions for example in Norway 29 people have died uh, in another country I saw a facial paralysis as a side effect now these are very huge side effects we don't want them to happen to 
patience. You know, it's not like a rash. So when you get a typhoid vaccine, even then you get a little bit of fever, a little bit of rash, but this is something very exorbitant. So what do we do? Should we allow the Pfizer vaccine into India next year? Yes or no? The answer will not be based on any one research. The answer will be based on multiple researches also. The answer will not only be based on the research on the COVID vaccine being applied on different countries in 2021. It will be based on the reactions of vaccines of people of different countries way back in 2002 when there was a pandemic. Again, previously when there were pandemics, how does the Indian body react vis-a-vis -vis the, <coughs> sorry, the Europeans. So to, to do this analysis, what you have to do is you have to do a summarization of the reports of the past 20 years. You have to do a summarization of reports of the past 20 years. Why am I saying so? And why is it so crucial in medical sciences is because one man dead is is not is not an option it is it is actually critical so that is when we do a systematic literature review now what is a systematic literature review i am going to study the vaccine application for the covid or any related corona strand of of that particular virus in this pandemic vis-a-vis -vis the previous pandemics and see if there was any effect on Indians vis-a-vis -vis others. And only then will I tell Pfizer, okay, I allow your vaccine in India in 2022. Okay, so that is the whole basis of doing a systematic literature review. Let me come straight away to how we do it. I'm not going to the difference between narrative. This is the process of doing a systematic literature review. I have to determine a research question. What is my research question? My research question is, is the COVID vaccine of Pfizer safe to the Indian body? When applied, will it be safe to the Indian body? And mind you, the, the, the first line of warriors who, who, on whom it's going to be applied is going to be the old people. I mean, the, the government is already going home to home to old people to... Uh, tell them that if you want to get vaccinated, so so they are they I mean agreed that uh, the vaccine is being given to them, but it's a huge risk. Okay, should it be given to them or not? This is a very big research question. And to answer this research question, you can do nothing but do a systematic literature review of the whole process. Uh, determine a research question, assemble a research team to study some two hundred reports in the past ten years. You cannot do it yourself. You will need a team of people to do it. Determine if there is any registered or published systematic review on this. Uh, right now, you'll not find any published systematic research review on the topic I'm speaking. But 20 years down the line, and it is estimated that these pandemics are going to become more frequent. The more frequent they will, the more you researchers will make meta-analytical reports. So right now, when it comes to COVID, no, there isn't a published systematic research uh, review which says that, okay, this vaccine is going to be good for Indians, but in future, there will be. Develop a comprehensive search strategy informed by inclusion and exclusion. We have to see that we include to conclude whether Indians will be affected by the vaccine or not. My personal opinion is you might differ as a researcher. My opinion is I would only and only include the Asian population. The, the Europeans have a different body set. The, the Europeans, um, I mean, I, I, I feel the Asians are much more stronger physically, can take the side effects of the COVID vaccine more strongly vis-a-vis -vis the Europeans. I mean, I'm just saying, of course, you have to support this with data. But I would, if I am searching a vaccine for India next year, I would like to include only the Asian samples. I would exclude any Western country. So 
a systematic literature review is a process where you very appropriately inform which data out of the 200 research reports that you selected, which, which data did you include and which did you exclude? Okay, select, select studies for inclusion based on predefined protocol. <laughs> Oh, yeah, somebody called Q from BTD who's not on mute. Yeah, now they are on mute. Yeah. So uh, select the studies on the basis of a protocol. I'm coming to that. Uh, how many of you know what is a prisma? I would like to know how many of you know what is a prisma? I don't know, ma'am. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Doesn't matter. Prisma uh, uh, participants, please. How many of you know what's a prisma? It's a protocol of, of systematic literature review. Okay, not known? Fine, no problems. No problems. I just wanted to check. I don't want to repeat something you've done already. If you don't know well and good for me, I, I can explain that. Okay, so the sixth point, you select studies not on the basis of what I want. Mera dil karta hai, main ye le lo. No, no. There has to be a predefined inclusion and exclusion criteria. And that criteria or that protocol is called PRISMA. Okay, till here, all that we are doing is systematic literature review. The moment we come to step number seven, extract data, put it into a software, analyze it from step number seven starts, meta-analysis. I'm repeating. From step number one till six, all that we are doing is nothing but a systematic literature review. From step number seven, from the time we start extracting quantitative data from these papers, these 200 papers, and analyze it into a software, which we are about to do, then it becomes, then it becomes meta-analysis. Okay, so... An ideal meta-analysis paper is a combination of the SLR, systematic literature review, and meta-analysis. Now, one very, very important thing in a systematic literature review vis-a-vis -vis a narrative review. Somebody was asking, what is the difference between narrative review and systematic review? So I'll just show it to you. I'll just show it to you. <coughs> Sorry. Uh... <coughs> Sorry, this is a narrative review where there are five authors. You will write that so-and-so did a survey in Norway on so-and-so medicine and so-and-so did a survey, but this is not systematic. You want to see a process of a systematic literature review? This is narrative, qualitative, uh, without any scientific background. You want to see a systematic literature review vis-a-vis -vis narrative one? I'll show it to you. So in a systematic literature review, this is the way we show what is called a protocol. And we show it in the form of a flow chart called Prisma. Okay, let me introduce you to Prisma <coughs> or protocol. Uh, when we do a literature review in social sciences or management, I think our work is easier than yours. Uh, because here it's not a matter of life and death. Okay, max to max, okay, a consumer's attitude will impact his purchase intention. If uh, uh, the result is wrong, the will be wrong, the will not be wrong. But it's so much danger for us. But the field that you are in, the field that the field that you are in, the results are very, very critical because they are relating to humans, in some cases to animals also. So, I have to go in a systematic way by defining a protocol, okay? A protocol, a method of doing things, a predefined, well-stated, limited method of doing research, okay? The protocol of doing systematic review and meta-analysis has been given by Cochrane. The, the, the flow chart in which you go around or the systematic method in which you include or exclude your studies is called PRISMA, Preferred Reporting 
items for systematic review and meta analysis that is the full form of it okay <clears throat> what does it help you do it helps you systematically scientifically justify the inclusion and exclusion of studies remember you are summarizing something for humanity you're summarizing something for a medicine made for humanity you better be sure of the report you have taken for that summarization and prisma will tell you that that reports that you have taken are fair <clears throat> how do we go around the prisma um if i am doing the research that i just told you that should a pfizer vaccine come to india next year for indians or not i will go to google search and by the way uh, systematic literature review and meta analysis is only and only done on secondary data we don't go to the patient we don't take his statistics we don't take any experimental research uh, with a virus with a chemical nothing nothing of that sort we don't do that we don't do primary research at all we don't do experimental research at all we only take data from secondary papers secondary data right so that's the first point so when i start a systematic literature review and then further i'll go to meta analysis when i'm doing that i get some 6600 papers of my of my domain so if i have to um you know get papers about a particular virus strain or or a particular uh, say a particular type of medicine which was uh, which was good for a virus or bad for a virus or harmful to the virus if i'm doing that sort of a study i get some 6600 papers of experiments which have been done experiments as in secondary data papers okay experiments already done papers already published where i get these papers in which there are experiments done there is a control group there is an experimental group okay uh, <clears throat> there is a standard deviation there is a mean there are there are there, there are some statistics done on that so i find some 6638 papers from this domain okay only working on the strand of covid 19 okay or similar strands out of this on the basis of title i exclude some 6000 papers i get on google scholar uh, google scholar or on scopus or cochrane which is a database for medical sciences i get some 6000 papers related to my topic <coughs> how do i get them i get them on the basis of keyword search so any database that you go to whether it is web of science whether it is scopus whether it is cochrane you get papers on the basis of the keyword you type based on your research i get these papers i exclude them on the basis of title i exclude them on the basis of abstracts i exclude them on the basis of the basic data i'm getting and not and i finally come down to some 31 studies where i have the exact study i have the exact paper i have the exact problem <clears throat> i have the exact patient and i have uh, i have the exact values which are needed for my meta analysis this whole process of coming from 6000 papers to 31 papers on the basis of screening is called prisma you have to compulsorily show this in a research paper or else you cannot go forward for meta analysis study okay further before i get to the software <clears throat> let me share with you uh, a paper that i uh i just wanted to share a paper just just give me a minute i'm just sharing a paper which i generally take as a yeah a sample paper for when when i describe meta analysis in the uh in the science field or in medical field or in the biological field so see the paper give me a minute
<clears throat> yes, here it is. Okay, so this is the paper. Can everybody view it quickly? Can everybody see it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It is visible. Yes. So this is a paper from a uh, psychological medicine, a journal called Psychological Medicine. <clears throat> it's a Cambridge University Press. Program. The topic you can see, <clears throat> the topic you can see clearly, okay? And this is a paper of systematic review and meta-analysis, okay? <clears throat> it has obviously been done on some experimental or controlled trials, okay? It has been done for mental health care, okay? Now, let me take you through the how how they so so if you see he says i've done a systematic literature review and look at the databases please take one minute to read this line this is especially for uh, the science students if you're doing a meta analysis these are your database <coughs> In social sciences, the database are a little different. We refer to Scopus, we refer to Web of Science, we refer to ProQuest. Okay, these are our database. But if you have to start a paper, these are the database you should be referring to. These are the database where you have to go and type the keyword, okay, and take papers from all databases, Web of Science, uh, PubMed, Cochrane, of course, Cochrane, of course, is number one when it comes to medical sciences, the, the, the largest database, okay? So this is from where he's taken. Now, let me go to, um, he's explained the problem, the introduction thing, and let me go to the, this is the prisma. Please have a look at this. This is his prisma. <clears throat> so in prisma, He's very clearly stated, I got 1717 papers from PubMed, 1072 papers from Scopus on my topic. These are on his topic. I mean, not as a general topic, a very specific research topic. Total number of articles was 4751. I excluded so-and-so, so-and-so because of language. He's given the reasons also. He says I excluded six, uh, 4605, 67 because of language, 4100 because they were off the topic. Okay, 283, because the methodology was different. Now, when I come to meta-analysis sheet, I'll show you that for doing a, a, a scientific meta-analysis, we need something called a standard deviation, mean, and sample number. These are the three things we need. Standard deviation, mean, and sample size. These are the three data we need from each of these 100, 200 papers. Okay, and I am supposing... I'm supposing that you know from papers of your domain how to extract standard deviation, mean, and sample size. I hope, and I'm, 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 I mean, this is this is a prerequisite of this workshop that you know how to extract it. Okay. I included these papers. I excluded these papers in the ones which were excluded, so and so so forth. So he's given a phase one and phase two of a prisma. Inclusion and exclusion principles, the database he uses because, because this study that I'm going to do, it's crucial. It's, it's, it's from the scientific field. It could affect the human being. And I have to be very, very sure of the data I'm taking to summarize and conclude something, say to the doctors about COVID-19, right? I hope this point is clear. Systematic literature review is clear. Now let us go to, um, <clears throat> I think now we can start with the software. Um, can we start with the CMA software? Where's the CMA? Just a minute, please.
let's let's just start with the software uh, but uh, before that uh, just give me one minute i'll have to explain to you what is an effect size just give me a minute Okay, before we go to the software, there's this one last thing that I have to explain to you because now that we are going numerical, now that we are going quantitative, you should know the meaning of that quantity that we are going to calculate. We are about to calculate an effect size. Okay, we are about to calculate an effect size. Okay, a term in meta analysis called effect size. We are going to start with that in a software. But I should know what is an effect size. And uh, to, to explain that, uh, to explain that, uh, let, me, let me take you to this example. Now, this is, a, this, this is a psychologist, and she is treating a lady. She's treating a young girl. Uh, how well has the therapy affected her behavior? Could be said in, in many ways. You know, one is it was very good. It was very effective. This is qualitative. This is narrative. This I don't want. I want a magnitude. I want a number of the effective treatment of the psychologist on the girl. And this number is generally given in a quantity called effect size. So effect size in this case is nothing but saying how effective has the therapy been on this girl? And I'm going to say that in a quantity called effect size. 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9. This is the magnitude of how effective the therapy has been on this girl. How did I reach this effect size? How did I reach an effect size of 0.3 or 0.4 or 0.5? I reached it by summarizing a set of studies. Which studies? Those 200 studies that I had just taken, included, excluded, finally reached. Those studies, those 31 studies which I reach at the end from which I'm going to do meta-analysis, the resultant, the summarization, the summarized effect of those 31 studies is 0.1 or 0.3 or 0.5 or 0.6. Okay, so that is the relevance of a effect size. How do you compute an effect size? Let's come to that. Effect size is of some hundred types. So there are some hundred types of effect sizes. There are some hundred ways of summarizing research. But the most effective three or the most commonly used three are when the input is of these three types, okay? So effect size is divided into a family of effect sizes, okay? So there's something called a D family, this is something we generally use in medical sciences and, and other sciences also. Uh, the, the, the values, the effect sizes that come out are known as the Hedges G, Cohen's D, and, and, the, and there could be many. I mean, I'm just listed two, three. There could be some hundreds more. Okay, but we will be dealing with the Hedges G only. There is an R family where the input that we give to the software is correlation values. I am assuming you people know what is correlation. I'm as, uh, you, you have to know these basic terms to start meta-analysis, okay? So the D family, my input into the software will be standard deviation, mean sample size. The R family, the input into my software will be the R value or the correlation value and the sample size. The others family or the third family that you see, the input to my software will be the odds ratio or log odds ratio. What I'm going to complete today, it is very difficult to do all three in two hours. What I'm going to complete today is the first one, the D family. Why I'm going to do the D family is because it is the D family effect size, which is most commonly used in your domain 
of meta-analysis. When it comes to social sciences, the domain to which I fall, we generally use the R family correlation. Okay, but in your case, you're going to calculate the hedges G today. Okay, and what will be your input? Standard deviation, mean, and sample size of two groups. Which groups? Control and experimental. From where will these values come? These values will come from the past papers, past research, secondary data. We are not going to go to any patient and do anything in meta-analysis. I hope this much is clear. Let me proceed further. I'm not going to the R family, as I said. <coughs> I'll go to the D family. Okay, I'll, I'll be doing the D family with you. So, Cohen's defined the, the, uh, the, the effect size of, of the D family. And, and he said that the effect size in, in an experimental research paper where there's a control group and there's an experimental group can be defined when we differentiate between the means of the two groups. Which two group? Control group and experimental group. And that is the reason the mean standard deviation sample size of the control group and the experimental group became an input to calculate these three types of effect sizes. So this whole concept has been given by Cohen's in 1988. Okay, so according to him, according to him, the input that you should be extracting from papers, those 100 papers should be the difference in the mean between the control group and the experiment group. This difference you have to extract from each of the secondary data papers, put it into the software, and the software will calculate the effect size automatically. Okay, so uh, this is what an input table looks like. Now I've done this for I've, I've done this for a very simple example. And after this, if you understand this, we can straight away go to the software. So um, the sorry, sorry, sorry. So uh, there was this 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 one uh, problem with patients, which was called uh, gastro hemorrhage. Okay, I've actually taken these values from a paper. There was this problem uh, with patients called a gastro hemorrhage. Okay. And uh, there was an endoscopic treatment given to patients, okay? So the two groups which were divided for study were the treated group, which were given endoscopic treatment, and the control group, which were not given endoscopic treatment. And an impact on the gastro hemorrhage was noted down in the form of bleeding from samples, okay? <clears throat> the mean... If you see the table, bleeding of samples, the mean column, the standard deviation, and the number of samples. So this was done for both the groups. If you see, it is being done for the treated group. It is being done for the control group. On the left side, you see names of authors, Raw, Weber, Horan, Sanders, Fix, Morin. These are all the research papers from where these values have been taken. And now I am going to put this input into a software, click a few buttons, the software will automatically give me something called an effect size. What is an effect size? A summarization of all these papers done over a period of 10 years, done from some hundred odd countries. All this will be summarized by the software in a minute. And I'll come out to something called the effect size. But when I come up with something called an effect size, how do I know what is a good effect size? What is a small effect size? What is medium? What is large? Should the vaccine come to India or not? How will I, how will I uh, conclude that? For that, Cohen, 1988, has already given a definition. So according to him, according to him, according to Cohen, if the effect size is still 0.2, it is small effect. If the effect size comes out to be 
after an analysis in the software if it comes out to be 0.5 it is medium effect if it comes out to be 0.8 it is large effect now question to the participants if you are listening you should be able to answer this tell me <clears throat> tell me if i have to do a summarization of the covid vaccine whether it should come to india or not and these are all the papers which have worked on covid vaccine control and experimental groups and these are their main standard deviations etc and i put them into the software and the software gives me an effect size 0.4 should i bring the vaccine to india or not please answer this if you have understood if you have understood till here you have to you could answer this because the, the the concept is more important than numbers if i have summarized all this data and the effect size has come out to be 0.4 should i bring it to india no i should not but every time a researcher concludes something there's something called a says who who says it cohen 1988 says it so if the covid vaccine is not largely effective to the indian population as found by the meta analysis study done by me till then that vaccine should not come to india so if all the vaccines by pfizer and the reports that i get from all the studies taken together put into the software give me an effect size of 0.8 or above i will say pfizer you are most welcome to come to india and we are ready to be guinea pigs but unless and until the effect size of all those reports are not 0.8 i will not let anybody enter india and experiment on the indian population i hope this much is understood now we can go to the software <coughs> we can start going to the software so <clears throat> i will be coming back to the ppt doctor jaspreet there are few questions in the chat box if you uh, can yeah, see yeah i'll stop yeah i'll just stop so um ma'am what is the difference between an uh, literature review and an slr i think i've explained that i showed you a narrative review that is a literature review i could pick up any four authors so you know it it's not that i have to take some 200 authors but in a systematic literature review you have just seen uh, you have just seen through prisma i selected some 6638 studies and from there i boiled down to 40 for meta analysis so slr is a more exhaustive uh, you you don't leave any any stone unheard so there's a paper meta analysis which i have submitted in um, uh just right now in 2021 and i'm fearful because you know if that paper doesn't get published for the next 6 months they will question me that you have not included the research done in 2021 till now the paper includes all the research done by 2020 december but if the paper does not get published in the next 6 months so what i'm trying to say is when you give your paper even if there's paper 2 days before you inculcate it in your findings so that is the strength of systematic literature review that exhaustive summarization which is not done in lr okay mom in social science there is also an experimental study then we can use d family definitely anuraga ma'am in social science and medical science also and uh, by the way i am referring to a paper i'll just show it to you uh, where they have actually um, uh, let me see the paper i'll just show it to you where they have spoken of what are the three types of um, <clears throat> a meta analysis which can be done in biological studies and uh, all three types are listed the d family the r family the or family all three are listed in that paper i'm going to show you that research paper um okay uh somya ma'am is saying ma'am i am a research scholar of ob domain organizational behavior and i am in the process of retrieving data for meta analysis paper fine there are some papers that give dimension wise correlation of iv with dv whereas some people given overall correlation ma'am you're supposed to be dealing with overall correlation throughout those 200 studies if you are taking a divided dimensional correlation 
you are supposed to be taking only papers with the dimensional correlation all over the study. That is my answer. Please maintain uniformity in OB. So uh, what Ma'am is trying to say, uh, what she's trying to say is that suppose there's something called customer engagement. So sometimes the papers give you a correlation between customer engagement and intention. And some papers, what they do is they divide customer engagement into two parts and give you a correlation of each of those parts with purchase uh, yeah. Okay, so my answer to that, ma'am, is that if you're taking 60 papers, all 60 papers should be customer engagement and purchase intention, or all 60 papers should be the two components of customer engagement and purchase intention. That is the answer to your question. And as of now, I don't find any other questions, ma'am. So can I proceed? Yeah, sure, sure. <clears throat> okay. So let me share the CMA screen first. Um, okay, so this is my comprehensive meta-analysis software. Okay, and let me let me just open a new file for you. Uh, okay, this is what a blank sheet looks like. Okay, so is everybody with me? And from here on, you have to be with me and have to be active on the chat because, you know, this is where theoretically uh, nothing is going to help. I mean, so is everybody with me? Okay. Now, first thing, you have to input data. So all of you, please go to insert. This is the, uh, I had given you two links, one of comprehensive meta-analysis trial version, 15 days, uh, sorry, I think 10 days, after 10 days, it'll expire. So right now you can do a little bit of, you know, work on it. The second link I've given you is of a software. Uh, it's not a software, it's a macro of Excel called Meta Essentials. This is, this Meta Essentials macro is absolutely free. Absolutely free. Okay, so comprehensive meta-analysis is paid. You don't need to learn it. I'm just telling you how to do calculations in this. And uh, meta-essentials, of course, is free. I'm going to show you the calculations of effect size. Okay, so meta-analysis has many concepts. I mean, Sunita Bam knows that uh, <coughs> I, I generally take a five-day, uh, two-hour each workshop on meta-analysis. So it's, 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 there are too many topics in it. But what we can finish in the limited time that we have is calculation of effect size. Okay, so that is primarily what I'll do over here. And I'll do it in meta essentials also. So everyone, please be with me. Insert, please go to insert. Column four, study names. I'm repeating, insert, column four, study names. You should automatically get a column on the left side first column saying study name. Is everybody getting that? Okay, so I'm going forward. Next, you go to insert column four. I'm going very slow. Insert column four. Effect size data, I repeat, insert column four, effect size data. You will get a window open where it says insert column for effect size data. Okay, go to and it will say show all hundred formats. Please go to next. Then it will say comparison of two groups. It is already by default. It is clicked. Please go to next. Now it will give you these options which you see on the screen. There is dichotomous number of events. This is for the odds risk ratio effect size. I'm not doing that. There's an option called correlation. This is for the R family effect size. I am not doing it right now. There is an option of continuous means. Please press it. This is for the Cohen D Hedges G type of effect size for medical sciences. This is what we are going to do today. So, continuous means 
Within continuous means, you get many options. Unmatched groups, post data, unmatched groups, pre and post data, before doing the experiment, after doing the experiment. Okay, one group, pre, post and matched groups. So there are many options. You select the first option, unmatched groups, post data only. So what we are doing is, we are comparing two groups. Which two groups? Control and experimental post data after the, the, the medicine or the chemical has already been given to the experimental group. After that, what happens to the control and experimental group? That is what we are seeing. So unmatched groups post data only. And in this, again, you get many options. There are hundreds of inputs that can go into calculate effect size. But what I'm doing today is mean, standard deviation, and sample size. So in the unmatched groups, post data only, please click on mean, standard deviation, and sample size of each group. You should get columns like these and a small pop-up saying name of the first group, name of the second group. And the software is prompting you. It is saying you can name the first group as treated. You can name the second group as control. And, and primarily in an experiment, these are the two groups that you generally use. So fine, I take the option of uh, the software. So group, one group I'm giving the name treated. Okay? Or I could also give experimental group. Uh, experi experimental so i'm making group one as group a as experimental group b i am naming as control all of you please reach here you should get columns like these so you should get one column of study name another column of experimental group mean standard deviation sample size then columns of control group mean standard deviation sample size And, and the, 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 the yellow uh, columns that you see are the analytical values, okay? We are standard difference in means, hedges G, which we are about to calculate, all that will come automatically. The moment I enter data and click something, the yellow columns are the final analytical values. They will come automatically. Has everybody reached here? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, somebody is speaking. Sorry, sir. I can't hear you, sir. Can you be a little loud, please? You may continue, maybe by mistake. Okay. No, Dr. Mukesh, uh, ma'am, Dr. Mukesh is saying I don't get variance column. You don't get variance column. Uh, sir, there, there might just be a problem in your settings, okay? So that's okay, you can leave it. Doesn't matter. Even if you don't get the variance column, it's okay. It's okay. It, it's with the other participant also. Dr. Meenakshi is also mentioning no variance column. Yes, yes. That is because, ma'am, uh, we we have an option of, in, in my, uh, we, we have an option of, adding columns, which I have done. So variance column, if it's not there, doesn't matter. Do not worry about it. Do not worry about it. What is main I'm telling you is the study name, experimental mean, experimental standard deviation, experimental sample size, control mean, control standard deviation, control sample size. These columns should be there. Are they there for everyone? Any problems with that so far? Madam, these columns, how to put? These columns? I can't hear, sir. Can somebody hear, sir? Yeah. Dr. Ketaram, I request you to kindly drop the query in the chat box. Because yeah, you are yeah, not, that'll be better. You are not audible. Okay. Meanwhile, let me go forward and start filling the column so that by the time I answer the queries, the rest who already have got it can go ahead. Okay. So I'll go ahead. And by the time you're typing and all that, I'll answer the queries. So study name. Suppose there's a study by Raw. Okay, the experimental mean suppose is 102. 
the standard deviation is somewhere around 12 and the experimental size the experiment was done on say some 100 people similarly the controlled group where say the medication was not given or the vaccine was not given or any such control group the control group mean was 100 the standard deviation in the control group was 14 and the control group was of a sample size say 90 by the way in meta analysis calculations the experimental group and control group need not be of the same number so it's not necessary you have to have 100 and 100 both sides okay then you go to effect direction you get a drop down okay and it says negative positive or auto just press auto the moment you press auto all these value of hedges g standard differences in the yellow columns automatically get filled up please do this process for at least the data of six papers and i am doing it for you please copy me and please make your data set like i am doing <coughs> and these are these are all uh, I mean, I'm just typing anything. I mean, it's not that I have a perfect data set or something. Even you could do that. The moment you press auto, it should give you a value on the right side. Okay. And then I'll tell you what to do. For namesake, I'm just typing an alphabet so that it could be just quicker. Okay. Anybody having a problem so far, please unmute because, you know, I'm continuously putting a value on software. It would be better if you could unmute and ask me. I'm not. After the study name, we will know column is there. Experimental meaning it is open. So you must have not inserted. Is this from some other person's side? It was from his side. I have muted him. His co uh, question is there in the chat box. He is asking after study name, after no column has experimental SD, RTC. Uh, uh, yes, that is because he went to insert. There was a step, go to insert, column for study name. Then there was, after the study name comes, again you had to go to insert, column for effect size data. Okay. In effect oh, size sir. data, you had to choose continuous. In continuous, unmatched groups post data only. In unmatched group post data only means standard deviation sample size. And you had to press an OK. If you had pressed an OK, it would have given you these columns. Probably you missed that step. Are, are the rest of the people uh, getting the steps? <laughs> Sunita Man, can you see the chat box? Uh, are the rest of the people okay with the steps? Yeah, one of the participants has responded. Two have responded, Divya, and then uh, Minakshi yeah. has also said, Sujoy Bose has yeah. also okay. said. Fine, fine, fine. So uh, I hope everybody's on the software. So for yeah. those who are on the software, I think you understand. Sure. So, yeah. So, 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 so experimental team. Ten and control standard deviation thirteen sample size hundred and thirty. Okay, let's do it for six papers. Experimental mean one zero four <clears throat> ten four hundred hundred fifty twelve. <clears throat> then the last paper was 100. 
10, 15, <clears throat> 100, 100, and... Uh, Dr. Jaspreet, there's a query in chat box uh, yes. by Dr. P. Kavita. She's saying, if I have inserted wrong selection, how to undo? If I have a selected wrong selection, just go to right click. Okay, sorry, go to edit. Go to edit. Okay, and there is an option of delete row. Please go to edit on the top corner and there's an option of a delete row. Just delete the row. There is also an option of delete study if you want to delete only study. And there's also an option of a delete column. Don't do that. Just delete the row, uh, row which where you have wrongly done. Okay, go to edit and delete row. <clears throat> Can I go forward? Okay, I'll wait for five minutes. I think please do this. Please make the entries and I'll, I'll wait for five minutes. <clears throat> Is everybody done? Can you please write on the chat if, if you are done? Okay, done. Okay, one done, two done. Okay, my share screen went away, just a second. Okay, done. Great. Let's go to the next step. Let's go to the next step. Please go to analyze. On the toolbar, you find something called analyze. Please go to analyze and go to run analysis. Go to analyze and go to run analysis. <clears throat> go to analyze and go to run analysis. Okay. These lines that you see are something called a forest plot. These lines that you see is something called a forest plot, okay? From raw, thorn, G-A-D-S, these are your study names, okay? The standard difference, the standard error has been calculated. And on the yellow line that you see, okay, it is the final summarized results. So just see the first value, 0.564. Okay, minus 0.564. This is your consolidated summarized effect size for that COVID vaccine from the past, from, from the six research papers that you took for this study from the past 10 years. I repeat, minus 0.564 is the summarized consolidated effect size for the COVID vaccine studied from the past six paper values from the past 10 years. The only difference in the statement that I'm saying is for trial sake, we are doing just six studies, okay? But when you actually do it, this will not be less than some 60 to 100 studies. Okay, so when you take up a, a, a study of your meta-analysis of your domain, anything less than 60 to 100 will not be a meta-analysis at all, right? So now you have found out the first thing that, that, that has to be reported in a meta-analysis, which is the effect size, consolidated, averaged, summarized effect size. Now, if... if Somebody does remember what, what, what Cohen D said, if you remember. So, so if, if you remember that for the D family, whether it's Cohen D, whether it's Hedges G, whether, whether it is Glasses uh, G, whatever value we took out for, for the D family, D family effect size, do you remember the benchmark? 
do you remember what cohen d had said about the consolidated effect size he said if it's still 0.2 it is low if it is still 0.4 it is medium if it is still 0.8 it is high so now can the participants tell me a uh, effect size of 0.564 is it low is it medium or is it towards the higher side Uh, no, Anuradha, ma'am, 10 days ke baad you cannot extend the license. Yes, no answers. No, it's not low. It's not low, Dr. Minakshi. Low was below 0.2. Medium was below 0.4. Yes, it is on the higher side. I'm not saying it's perfectly high at 0.8. No. It but is it is Sorry, ma'am, uh, but it is negative. Ma'am, negative positive does not have okay. a, okay. yeah, okay. because, you know, it's something like correlation. See, either you're connected or you're not connected. So even if you are negatively connected, you're connected. So I'll explain this with a, with a very simple example. If a person, uh, you know, if you're emotionally attached to a person, there is a relationship, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. Now that person can make you happy. If he makes you happy, the relation becomes positive 0.5. If he makes you cry, the relation becomes negative 0.5. But the problem is that you are related. The, 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 the conclusion we are trying to reach is that you are related, medium related or high related, so on and so forth. Okay. So uh, according to Cohen D, this is somewhere around medium or, or a beginning of high. Medium to high is the range that it is. Which value do we need to check? Can you please repeat? There was an internet glitch. Okay, Akanksha, ma'am, you have to check the Cohen's D value. See, ma'am, Cohen D says anything below 0.2 is no correlation, uh, is no effect size at all. 0.2 to 4, okay, it is low. 4 to 8, it is medium. And above 0.8, it is going to be high. So we fall somewhere around the medium range. But not just medium at 0 0.4. We are somewhere between medium and high. Okay, so that that conclusion is given on the basis of the standards given by Cohen already. Cohen 1988, he's given those standards. Now, this is how you do it in a software. Let me take you to the paper and show you how it is represented in a paper. Okay, so this is one value we have got. We have got the effect size. We have got the effect size of minus 0.564. Now, let me go back to the sample paper that I had brought for you and show you how you report this. software ki baat ho but you have to know how do you report it. Just too many screens open. Okay, here it is. Yes, so this was the paper that I was sharing with you. Now, this is a systematic review and meta-analysis paper. Uh, a few of this, uh, you know, you would you would be able to you would be able to understand. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me read this out to you a little. So very clearly, he says that I selected papers from PubMed, Scopus, Web of Science that I've shown you in his Prisma. He further says that I screened some five, seven, uh, sorry, four, seven, five, one papers and got 23 included. And from there, I did a meta-analysis. So let me see his meta-analysis results. This is his prisma. Let me see his meta analytical. So this, these are the papers he has used. He has listed all the papers he has used. Okay, Bay, Borman, Borman et al, Borman, Roald, he's given the 
authors he's given the participants he's given the sample size of each papers he's given the scales by which these parameters have been measured okay cardiac cardiac pre surgical so the how it has been measured he's given those tools type of intervention whether it was medication whether it was therapy he's listed that okay number of sessions given follow up of the patient one to six months so on and so forth okay so he's given all that and then finally he is given a chart so if you can see this chart on the right side what you see is something called a forest plot that the software is already showing you this forest plot he's done for some 20 papers thus it is a little elongated and we have done it barely for six papers for trial sake so thus it is a little shorter now in each of the paper there is a there there is a size of mean standard deviation mean standard deviation sample size which must have been given to the software he's also showed it he's also showed the mean and standard deviation of experimental group mean and standard deviation of the control group you can see that he's very clearly showing the input he has given to the software and finally he says i have a value of of point if you see the 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 bold value okay it says minus 0.43 okay this is his consolidated effect size okay this is generally shown as a diamond shaped black diamond shaped thing in a forest plot also so this lies uh, if you see the scale if you see the scale of the forest plot if you see the x axis it is from 2 to minus 2 okay and a uh, minus 0.43 is the effect size overall effect size which has been found out okay so this is the <clears throat> this is the conclusion of all and from where did he start he took some 4700 and something papers and then he consolidated 23 and from those 23 he's got these results he's very clearly stated the inputs he's taken okay uh what you see in the square brackets is the upper upper and lower limit of this so you know whenever uh, a student gets some marks in the examination uh, suppose you know a student gets from 60% so we don't start saying okay he's medium okay so cohen says define him small medium high so the moment you uh, get suppose 60% marks it's not that your faculty says okay you are medium no you can't do anything better or you can't be anything less the faculty always says that you are 60% but you can do better okay and parents uh, sometimes parents say chalo yaar 60% aage bahut hai fail bhi ho sakte the so the upper and lower limit is is that capacity of that child who today got 60% okay so if a person has got 60% you can say okay this guy can range from 50% to 70% you cannot say he can range from 50% to 90% or 100% a 60% or very rarely if he is continuously getting a 60 very rarely will he go to 100% so you set a limit okay 50% to 70% is the upper and lower limit similarly when we conclude that an effect size of all our studies in meta analysis when we conclude that the effect size of all our studies is minus 0.43 we always give an upper and lower limit which means that the same meta analysis if done again with these 23 plus 5 more papers suppose done after 5 years this effect size can vary from 0.6 to minus 0.25 we give a range this is called the upper limit and lower limit okay taking you back this is how we report whatever i have taught you taking you back to my slide um although i haven't found very many people to uh, pro formulas i mean of course as i said just a second um let me stop sharing this and take you to the ppt uh only if you really want to know the formula of of how things are done in in calculating hedges g or cohen's d uh i do have a set of formula i'll be giving these ppt to the uh, to the college so uh, for the love of formula so if any of you know want to know what is going on 
behind the software okay if any of you want to know that what is going on behind the software how the software has calculated these values or the effect size you could you could go through these formulas also there's a book of borenstein okay borenstein 2009 borenstein 2000 uh 11 also i think that's the new edition so you could go through borenstein's book these formulas have been taken from his book i always refer to him when i do my calculation and write research papers you could go to borenstein's uh, book also to understand what are the formulas behind uh, what the software is doing uh for those of you who are good in english uh, sorry hindi who can understand hindi Uh, you can watch dr neeraj koshik's videos youtube videos on how to calculate effect size in meta analysis for the pohan d or hedges g the d family and uh, he actually you know he works on an excel sheet so he doesn't work on a cma he actually works on an excel sheet does everything manually on an excel sheet and shows you how these things are being calculated at the back end uh, but of course um, you could refer to these formula and okay yeah so these formula if you want to know how it is being calculated and uh, dr neeraj koshik's youtube videos on meta analysis very elaborately he's told you how uh, things are being calculated if you want to get to the statistical you might not need it because for us the software is more than enough and then uh, what we need is the analysis part so i need to know that how is that point 4 point 8 interpreted interpreted through cohendi's reference and written in a research report so that is two things which are most crucial to me to write a paper but there are people who want to understand the uh, this thing so uh, dr koshik is very good he sees a quantitative person so he's explained very well okay now let me share the screen of Ah, I've lost the screen again. Yeah, uh, Meta Essentials, Meta Essentials software. Everybody had downloaded. So let us do the same thing on uh, Meta Essentials, and then we'll come to another concept called uh, <coughs> fixed and random model. Um, let me see where I'm off on Meta Essentials. Just. uh in meta essentials while going through all the sheets you will find one sheet there are many sheets in meta essential but there's one sheet where the standard deviation yeah so that sheet is called uh it is sheet number 3 <clears throat> there are many sheets when you download meta essentials there are many sheets the sheet is sheet number 3 meta essentials differences between that is the name of the file okay so when you download meta essentials there will be many excel uh, files that you see and the one that we have to is the one that we have to work on is this one it is called sheet number 3 meta essential differences between independent groups i'm sharing it with you i'm sharing it with you now what we did on cma is a paid version okay so cma is a paid software this is the free macro okay so so all that you have to do here is there's an input sheet when you come to the sheet when you come to the sheet you will see there are within the excel sheet there are other sheets also so the first sheet is input sheet okay in input you would see there are study names okay it is made you can change the study names there are already pre made columns of m1 that is mean 1 m2 which is mean 2 m2 minus 1 if you want to put you can put or else you can leave it uh standard deviation 1 standard deviation 2 n1 is sample size 1 sample size 2 and what is this 1 and 2 1 and 2 1 and 2 experimental group control group experimental group control group okay and uh 
So you always have to say the data is sufficient, okay? Uh, forget subgroup and moderator. So the moment you put this data, the, and it has to be input like you input data in an Excel sheet. Okay, so this is no rocket science. You just have to input the data the way it is inputted in an in a normal Excel sheet. And uh, it is it is an automated Excel macro. So the moment you enter the data and you go to the next sheet, which is forest plot, forest plot, you will see automatically a forest plot will come up on the data that you have input. Okay, so you can try this. You can, if you want five minutes, you can you can put the data right now if you want to okay or you can cut copy paste the data of cma into this sheet and try it for yourself okay and you get a consolidated effect size over here okay that consolidated effect size is shown by this green little ball okay the moment you go to it, it's, it shows combined effect size. And when you open up the sheet, it's not that you have to input data. A default data is already input into the sheet. So you can see the forest plot. And if you change the data, the forest plot will change. So it says combined effect size minus 0.42. Okay, so that is the combined effect size. It is clearly shown. This is also a forest plot. Okay, so forest plot have different... Uh, different uh, visual ways of representing the forest plot. So all these that you see, the, the blue uh, dots that you see, these are all your studies. Okay, these are all your input, okay, studies. And this green dot which you see is the consolidated average effect size uh, of the, the studies taken together. Okay, so the consolidated effect size. Okay, so that is effect size. I hope this Dr. Jaspreet, there's a question in the chat box uh, from yes. Anuradha. Um, yes. Which sheet has to take for uh, social sciences? For social sciences, you will take sheet number five, which says correlation. Social sciences, sheet number five, which says correlation. Okay. And the process is same. The process is same. Of course, the input over here, because we are talking about medical studies, so we are talking about standard deviation, mean, and sample size. There, the inputs will change because it's a social science. The input over there becomes correlation and sample size. Correlation value and sample size. She's also asking, like, and also please explain how to copy it in the MS Word. MS Word? Why do you want to copy it in MS Word? It is to be copied in Excel, right? You, oh, you want to copy this into MS Word? Is that yeah, maybe, what you're yeah, maybe this is a query. This okay. one into MS. This, uh, this, I think it can be done through print screen. So if you go to print screen, you will be able to do this. Okay, or you can uh, select data. Okay, it says a range of data which you can select and then copy it. Okay, and if I go to file, no, there, there are no options. So you, you can select data, you can right click select data. In select data, you will have to tell it the rows you want to select and then copy paste it to a Word file. That is how you do it from here. Okay, that is how you copy the data from Meta Essentials to the Word file. Okay, so it's almost like an Excel sheet. The way you copy data from an Excel sheet to a Word file, similar way you have to do over here. Okay. Anuradha, is that your query is answered? Yeah, it's okay. okay. Great. Now, uh, let us go to another concept. So now we have done effect size. We know how to uh, interpret the magnitude of effect size. Now I want to take you to another concept quickly, which is fixed and random model. So um, even when you see the input and then you see the forest plot, you know, what you'll see is on the left side, uh, there is something called a model. Okay, I'm still at Meta Essentials. Uh, on the left side corner, there's something called a meta analytical model and there's something called a model. And in this model, they say, there's a drop down which says random or fixed. 
this is one concept which I want you what I want you to learn first theoretically through the PPT, and then I want to bring you back to uh, this PMA and Meta Essentials to see what, how the effect size varies when it is a fixed model and when it is a random model. But when to take a fixed model to calculate effect size and when to take a random model, that you can only know if you know the concept. So I'll just take you to the concept of fixed and random model. So, okay, <clears throat> just give me a minute. <coughs> Uh, before going to what is a fixed and what is a random model, uh, there's something called uh, heterogeneity that you need to know. So, despite the fact that I've got uh, one, one method of describing my data is that I've got a consolidated effect size, which is say 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.8. This is one analysis I've done from the data. This is one part of summarization. There's another part of summarization where I explain if these 20 studies, 40 studies which I've taken were similar or were they varying from each other? Okay, so were these all studies similar? So now what you're doing is although you've got a consolidated effect size, but I'm trying to describe the pattern in the studies. Are they all similar? Or are they all different? That is what is heterogeneity. So heterogeneity in data has to be calculated in meta-analysis. And what we are wanting it, or why are we calculating is because we don't want 40 studies out of which 20 are apples and 20 are oranges. And this heterogeneity can be avoided if we select the studies properly, okay? So we, we see our domain, we study the studies only from our domain. At the same time, we should not become like all red apples. So a, a, a good research report would be one, which is not apples and oranges, is not all red apples, because then the reports are similar. What am I concluding? What am I summarizing? So it has to be a mix of colorful apples, big apples, small apples, red apples, green apples, but apples. I should not go to oranges. So that value which tells you that your data is okay, or okay. your data, your data. The data which tells that you haven't selected oranges and all, all of what you've selected is apples, whether they are small, big, whatever, together, is the value of heterogeneity. Let's come to how we calculate it. The first method of seeing whether your data is heterogeneous or not is the forest plot. And it's very simple. Just look at the plot in front of you. Just look at the plot in front of you. You see that all the studies are hayward. They're not on the mean line. Okay, so which is the mean line? The green ball is the mean of all the studies. And you see the studies are either left towards it or right towards it. Half are left, half are right. So the first type of test that you do for heterogeneity is from the forest plot. You look at the forest plot and decide are these studies heterogeneous or these studies homogeneous. So according to me, if I'm looking, it, it's called an eyeball test. It's a very, very basic test and it's not concrete. We will have to do statistical analysis to prove that it is okay. So uh, when, when I look at this, uh, this graph or this chart, uh, I find studies hayward, left, right, here and there. So according to my eyeball test, my first preliminary test, I can say that this data is heterogeneous. Okay, first test. Let's come to the second test. The second test is a statistical value being calculated. And what are the statistical values which we calculate to measure heterogeneity? <laughs> The values that we calculate to, <clears throat> to understand 
heterogeneity is the q value i square value tau square value these are the three values that we calculate to calculate heterogeneity what is a q value a q value is nothing but a chi, a chi square statistics okay and i've given you the formula of calculating it now here what does the value say and how do we interpret it that is what i'm going to tell you here and then we are going to go to the software the most important figure when you get a q value in meta analysis is the p value if the p value is less than 0.1 there is heterogeneity if the p value is more than 0.1 there is no heterogeneity this is very similar to the other tests also so chi square t test anova all of them have something called a p value which is also called the significance value and in all the tests the concept is same there the value is 0.05 you could take 0.05 over here also it is called the significance value so anything below 0.0 uh, 0.05 shows that there is a relationship because there is a variance in data anything above 0.05 shows that there is no relation because there is no variance in data of the two sets similarly in heterogeneity calculation a q value with a p value which is more than 0.1 means the data is homogeneous the 40 papers that you have taken are homogeneous and if the p value is less than 0.1 then it shows that the data is heterogeneous all your data is heterogeneous but how much heterogeneous 20% 30% 40% 80% that is not measured by q value q value just tells you whether your data is heterogeneous or whether your data is homogeneous 0.1 above 0.1 below that's it period so case in heterogeneity i want to know the quantity of heterogeneity that is when i square comes into picture i square gives me a heterogeneity in percentage all these things are going to be automatically calculated by the software so need not worry i'm just telling you the concept if you don't understand the concept you'll not be able to interpret the data okay so if the i square value comes to till 25% it is low heterogeneity if it is 50% till 50% it is moderate heterogeneity and if it is till 75% it is substantial heterogeneity okay the problem will come when your heterogeneity is more than 50% you will have to have to justify the heterogeneity through further moderators so you'll have to say that probably you know you you have other statistical test for that called meta regression so you'll have to do a meta regression and say okay this variance which is coming this heterogeneity which is coming more than 55% it is probably coming because i took a mix of papers of um, say sample size more than 500 and sample size less than 500 that is the point of variance or old papers and new papers that is why this heterogeneity is coming so once the heterogeneity comes you will have to justify it in meta analysis okay so <clears throat> and and of course there's a tau value tau value is the deviation from the mean so every value that you see in the forest plot the blue values how are they how are they 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 deviating from the green ball that is what is tau value so if you get one tau value obviously it is an average of all the deviations you are getting from the green mean of all studies put together the total deviations all these studies are doing from the green mean that becomes the tau value so these are the three values that you will get in the software and that is the relevance that is the interpretation now let's go to the software <clears throat> now let's go to the software comprehensive meta analysis this is where we were this is where we left okay what do you do to see the heterogeneity values you go to analyze okay go to 
analyze okay and go to next table so you go to next table just go to next table and you will see this this format go to analyze and go to next table I hope everybody is seeing this. Everybody should have got this. It's very simple. You don't have to do anything. You just have to go to analyze and go to next table. <clears throat> Has everybody done this? Can I go forward? <clears throat> Has everybody done this? Okay. So, you just go to analyze and it shows you heterogeneity values. But the problem is it shows you two types of values. One is there's a row called fixed and there's a row called random. Now let me tell you the relevance of fixed and random. In case, based on the heterogeneity value, you decide whether you should go for a fixed model to calculate effect size or random model. First, let me explain to you this paper. Uh, this, uh, page. Whether fixed or random, let's read it out. The number of studies are six. That is the number of studies we had put in. Point estimate is nothing but the consolidated effect size of these six studies. In the fixed model, it is coming minus 0.564. In the random model, it is coming minus 0.293, which is a very difference. Now, my dilemma as a researcher is, should I take fixed model or should I take random model value? Which value of effect size should I take? The computer is giving me two values, minus 0.564 and minus 0.293. Which one should I take? That decision is made on the basis of these values of heterogeneity. Okay, let's read them out. And then I'll tell you which one to take. So let's read them out. Now, which was the most important value in Q statistics? The p-value. And p-value is less than 0.1 or less than 0 0.05, whatever you are taking as a parameter based on the references you have. Because the p-value is less than 0.1 or less than 0 0.05, so what should I conclude? My data is heterogeneous this value is telling me my data is heterogeneous my p value is less than 0.1 but i want to know how much heterogeneous because higgins has given me a scale 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent i want to see whether i'm in low medium or high scale so i calculate the i square the i square as shown by the data is 99 percent what does it show? Very high amount of heterogeneity. So when your heterogeneity is so high, I mean, higher than 50%, more than 50%, you should go for the p-value of random, uh, for the effect size of random model. I'm repeating, I'm repeating. If your i square of heterogeneity is very high, higher than 50% value. I mean, from 50% onwards, it becomes higher. From medium, it goes to higher. So if your, if your I square is more than 50%, which means your data is very heterogeneous, which means all those 40 papers that you have taken, okay, they are varying here and there. They are varied, maybe because of population size maybe because of method of research, maybe they are varied because of region, maybe they are varied because of sample size, whatever is causing that variation, whatever is causing this 99 variation, that is not our point. Our point is that when we have seen this variation of 99%, which is more than 50%, I should choose a random model, okay, and take the value of the effect size of the random model. I should take the value of the random model and not the fixed model. So 
random model effect size value over here is 0.293 and I will go by that and I will report that in my paper and I will say the effect size of this COVID vaccine is low as per as per Cohen 1988 who said till 0.2 the value is low so this is it comes between low and medium but it is definitely low but had I not known this concept of fixed and random model I would have concluded that my 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 fixed effect size is minus five six minus 0.56 which is medium to high I would have interpreted the data wrongly. So having said that, the crux of this heterogeneity uh, uh, Q value, I square value is that the effect size comes out to be different when your, when your papers, 40 papers are heterogeneous. The effect size comes out to be different when your 40 papers are homogeneous. So, which effect size to take for that, you will have to assess these heterogeneity values and then take up a decision of which effect size you want to take. Okay, any questions so far? Any questions so far? Uh, two are there in the chat box. Uh, one, Dr. Anuradha has asked, if we are taking random model, then we yeah. have to report the fixed model also? No. If you are taking the random model, you have to first justify why you are taking it. So when you say I'm taking random model, you will have to give references. You will have to give references of Higgins. You will have to give references of Cohen. You will have to give references of Borenstein and say, that they say if heterogeneity is this much, go for random. So I'm going for random and only and only taking the effect size value of random model. Does that mean that secondary data with very high heterogeneity is ideally not preferable? Uh, Dr. Jayata, it is not that it is not preferable. See, uh, unlike primary data analysis, ma'am, you haven't done anything wrong. See, all these are secondary papers which you have chosen. And through the PRISMA protocol, you make it very, very clear that there is no bias in selecting papers. You have not left any stone unheard in selecting the papers. So you are not at fault. So even if, I mean, I have seen social sciences papers reporting heterogeneity of 90%, 80%. Heterogeneity is not wrong. Heterogeneity is not wrong. But as a meta-analyst, you have to justify why that heterogeneity has come. And that is done by advanced techniques called meta-regression. So in meta-regression, I'll just explain a little theoretically what happened. In meta-regression, I divide my 40 papers on the basis of publication time. I divide my 40 papers on the basis of research method used. I divide the 40 papers on the basis of location and all these become my moderators. Location, publication time, region, sample age, all these are my moderators. I'm trying to see why this heterogeneity is there. And then I do something called a meta regression where the software in this very form tells me that your heterogeneity is because of X, Y, Z factors. It is because of location. It is because of population size. It is because of sample size. It is because of uh, old paper, new paper. So the software tells me. And then I write those results of meta regression and say, these were found to be the effective moderators. But if while calculating heterogeneity, my heterogeneity itself is somewhere around 20% or 30%, which is very low heterogeneity, then I will not use moderators because there is no heterogeneity to justify through meta regression. Okay, so that is the technique. Uh, but the effect size of random is low. Is it okay? That's okay, Anuradha ma'am. We, Anuradha ma'am, this is all secondary data. This is the only data, meta-analysis data. The problem is it can't be manipulated. Primary data, you can still manipulate. Excel sheets, you can manipulate. This data cannot be manipulated. 
it is a value which has been taken from a published paper how can i change it i can't change it and i definitely cannot wrongly report it so if there is high heterogeneity then we can go for writing the paper or oh, definitely i can show you papers you want to see i'll show you papers i'll show you one of the papers that that is published also i use it as a sample also i'll i'll show you the heterogeneity table because i wanted to show you how you report it in a research paper also so effect size and forest plot i have shown you how you report in a paper i would like to show you um i'll i'll like to show you how you report heterogeneity uh, there's a table to report heterogeneity i'll just show it to you give me a minute I'm just bringing it to the page. Give me one minute. Yeah. So let me share it with you. Okay. This this is the sample paper that I'm talking about. This is of course on social sciences, but uh, this is the way you report your heterogeneity. So in this table, if you see, uh, he's taken correlation values. Of course, this is a correlation value. This is an example of a management domain effect size. where we take correlation value okay and he has uh, uh, calculated the uh, this is this is uh, uh, this is the effect size with correlation which is the r family effect size so he found out 0.61 and this is the upper and lower limit this is the q value for the same and this is the i square value and just have a look at the i square value there is no value which is less than 90% and this is a proper paper which has been published for all those into health and medical sector let me show you the title of this paper this is actually a uh, a research of uh, yeah faculty of science medicine and health papers okay so uh, this this is a university journal uh, for faculty of science medicine and health and this paper is pretty much published in a journal of a university so very authentic paper and just look at how they have uh, this is a prisma it has a prisma also the way i showed you in the second paper it has this where it's reported the effect size uh, unlike the one which we have done where we have used standard deviation mean and sample size this a uh, paper has used the input of correlation so while we have studied today the d family this paper is based on the r family correlation right so this is the way you report and uh, of course the three stars show that q value is significant okay so they have given the q value and then they have given three stars the three asterisks that shows that the p value is significant p value means significant means it is less than 0.1 okay which means there is heterogeneity okay so it would be wrong if he reports an i square of 94% 90% 91% and his q value is not significant so it is like saying there is a heterogeneity of 90% but q value does not show heterogeneity or not that's not possible that's not possible for so even you know giving a, a a heterogeneity value of 90% and further he's he's done a moderation analysis also so this is this is his moderation analysis and even after he's put a moderator here the moderator being age so he's divided the sample on the basis of age even after that look at the i square values So look at the i square values 97 even after using the moderator big deal it's okay it's okay see even after using the moderator the look at the heterogeneity i square values they are too high that's okay so you know what what we are trying to do is we are trying to establish a pattern of research we are not trying to justify we are not trying to fix the research by saying no it has to be homogeneous no we are just describing a pattern if the pattern is heterogeneous well be it how does it matter uh, if there is high rate d value changes yes minakshi ma'am d value you mean to say the effect size of d family yes it changes and i just showed you in the software that when there was a uh, when there is heterogeneity we take the random model which was minus 0.2 something and when there was no heterogeneity we take the fixed model which was minus 0.5 something okay 
any other questions anybody who's having a problem and yeah i have to lastly quickly take you to the um <clears throat> yeah meta essential sheet because i have to show you the values over there okay here we are so i've shown you heterogeneity uh, on on uh, cma now it is on um, so this is the value so you have a you have a hedges g which is minus point a uh, point 42 now if you see the model if you see go to the model uh it gives you two options so there is something called a random and fixed so it is already by default on random uh, that is why your hedges g is minus point 42 okay i have ju just brought the hedges g hedges g is nothing but the combined effect size overall average effect size of all the papers taken together so uh, if i change it let me see let me change it go to the drop down change it to fixed and the moment i make it fixed fixed effect model look at the hedges g it has changed to minus 0.36 the same thing which was happening in cma there was a different effect size for random there was a different effect size for fixed model and it was we who had to decide what to take now Uh, even in uh, meta essentials is giving you two different values minus 0.4 and minus 0.3 so now which one do i see i will base my study on the basis of this look at the heterogeneity values over here like in cma even meta essentials is giving you a heterogeneity value so look at the heterogeneity the heterogeneity is somewhere around 98% which is very very high okay and of course the p value is 0.000 which means it is significant heterogeneity heterogeneity as high as 98% definitely i cannot take this effect size because this is fixed effect size i can't take it i will have to choose the random the moment i choose random it becomes minus 0.42 and this is the effect size i will take this is the effect size i will report in my research paper okay as and when these random fixed change okay see my data is not changing my standard deviation mean sample size that is remaining same for all my input sheet is not changing but my forest plot is changing look the forest plot now and just see the moment i do random here the forest plot changes okay further let me let me try and change the input a little to to show you uh, how how the effect size can change so suppose i say this i'm i'm just randomly putting some input just to change my effect size okay so i'm just trying to put some values and trying to change my effect size okay suppose i'm just adding some more inputs and saying will my effect size change or will it remain normal okay so suppose i these are the values i've changed let me see is my effect size changing okay we we'll have to give it a minute let me see fixed model minus 0.36 it has become and random model 0.42 minus 0.42 a minor change in effect size when i am changing the input okay so when you people do it when you also change your input the effect sizes will change okay so this is how you can do in meta essentials it's absolutely free absolutely free meta essentials and rather it is easier than cma uh in uh, i am doing meta analysis in e-commerce and artificial so how many variables can i take for a good meta analysis paper ma'am you can take as many as you want i am doing a paper on customer uh, engagement i have got some 64 variables but you know when you get some 64 variables five variable relationships then you have to club them and say okay this is customer based this is product based so you can take as many as you want to i have got some 64 and i'm struggling because you know i have to 64 uh, 64 variables means 64 rows ma'am i just showed you a paper there were four five rows na for each value effect size 64 variables means 64 rows of the table although i'm doing that but uh, i am when you get such a huge variable base from the past 20 years you have to categorize that into customer based or this based on that based, okay so that has to be done 
Any other questions? Anyone? And uh, Sunita ma'am, as I told you, I will be giving you all the uh, 10 hours videos. You can share it with participants. Okay, it's there okay. on the Google Drive. Sure. It's there on the Google Drive. And uh, you can uh, I, you can share it because, you know, in two hours, it becomes very difficult to do all the concepts. And I've yeah. been doing it fast. I, I, I've been yeah, I do it. understand. I do yeah. understand. You can share. I'll share with the participants. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. uh, how much time do you require more now? You are not audible, Dr. Jaspreet. I'm done with my, uh, with my uh, theoretical thing. Now I'm yeah. getting the questions, or as you said, if somebody wants to share the screen, they are free to do that. Okay. Anybody who wants to, who's stuck somewhere in CMA or Meta Essentials, wants to share the screen, please go ahead and share. Anybody who has doubts regarding, uh, has not been able to reach till here, has not got the heterogeneity value, uh, should I should I just repeat the whole process? If there are no doubts, I think I can repeat the whole process on CMA. I think yeah. that's yeah, right. Sure. Right. right. So let me repeat the whole process on CMA because I think Meta Essentials is very, very easy. Let me repeat the whole process on CMA. So this is my CMA sheet. Okay, uh, let me go back. I'll open a new file. Absolutely new file for those people who could not follow. Okay, so <clears throat> we go to insert column for study names. You get a column for study names. You add some names of the author or as of now, I'm just adding alphabets. You go to insert column four, okay? And you go to effect size data and in effect size data, you go to next, comparison of two groups, go to next, go to continuous. There are three types that can be done. Dichotomous, continuous, correlation, but I'm only stressing on continuous. Unmatched groups, post data only, okay? Mean standard deviation and sample size. Click it, you will get automatic columns. It will tell you to name group A and group B. Name group A as experi experimental. Name group B as control. Okay, press and okay. Okay, and uh, you get uh, these columns, ready-made columns. And because you had told the software that you're going to put inputs of this, so you have to give it a mean of experimental group, a standard deviation of the experimental group, and you're not giving it yourself. Who's giving it? It is this paper that you're referring raw. The paper of raw, as done on patients, had a, say, an, an experiment of a, a vaccine, and there was a control group. And there was a parameter they were measuring, say, um, uh, suppose the blood pressure, okay, of the patients who were given the vaccine vis-a-vis -vis those who were not given the vaccine, experimental and control group. So the, the mean of, of BP, for example, for the experimental group was 120. The BP of the control group was, say, somewhere around 100. I'm just taking an example. Okay, so that is the data extracted from a secondary, which you have to put in. You go to analyze run analysis and it gives you a forest plot, okay? You further go to analyze and next table, it gives you heterogeneity values. And how you have to analyze it that I have to told you, I have already told you, the major references that you take are Cohen's D, Higgins. These are the major references you have to take to analyze those values, those numbers, how you interpret them, all that I have told you in my slides. I will be forwarding you the slides. Okay, um, a few questions. A few questions in the chat yeah. box, please. Yeah, I'm not able to download Meta Essentials. Hi, Dr. Minakshi. I've given you a link. If you go to that link and download the trial version, you'll be able to download. And uh, Meta Essentials, oh, sorry, Meta Essentials is not even, okay, should I show you the process? Give me a minute, I'll show you a process. I'll show you the process on the net. Ma'am, I plant science, what type of paper used for meta analysis? Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ram, I'll really not be able to comment on this. This is your domain. So if you really want to see that, um, 
Okay, if you really want to see that, give me a minute, I'll show it to you. Uh, I, I don't know much about plant size, but I'll show you how. Uh, There's a very good question that you want to know that how to get papers. So, okay, so what I do, what I'm doing on Google Scholar, you have to do on Web of Science, Cochrane, and all those websites, okay? So I'm sharing the Google, uh, this thing, okay? And on Google Scholar, I'm showing you. So you say, uh, I don't know, plant size, you said? Okay, plant signs. Okay. okay, so plant signs, just do as simple as this, meta analysis, okay, and press and enter and just read the paper. So yeah, the, these are the papers, sir. Can you see? Willine, and these are the published papers, by the way, don't work on them. And if you really want to see the papers in the past four years, mm -hmm. then since 2017, so these are the papers which have come after 2017. These are your topics, sir, on which meta-analysis has already been done. So please choose a topic other than this. Okay? okay thank you, thank you. Yeah. And uh, one question was there uh, about, um, yeah, meta-essentials. Yes, let me again go to Google and tell everybody how, because meta-essentials is, and meta-essentials, thanks to Kaushik, sir, Neeraj Kaushik, sir, because um, I only could operate on... Uh, CMA and it's a paid software, but Meta Essentials is free. There's another software called Jamovi, which is free. Uh, our software is free, but our software has a lot of coding. You could do meta analysis on our software also, by the way. But it has a Sorry? It's okay. Uh... Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so th this was Meta Essentials. I had searched from here. Meta Essentials. Right, so this is the website, erim.eur.nl. I hope everybody can see this. So you go to this website and go a little below and it says Microsoft Excel Online. Okay, I think this is it. Is it? No. Sorry, I, I must have gone to something else. Just a minute. Yeah, so we can provide, a, okay, yeah, downloaded here, sorry, the workbooks, it says the workbooks can be downloaded from here, so just press the here, okay, and it will say download, and just download, all the workbooks will get downloaded, okay, so there's a workbook on correlation, that is number five, there's a workbook on Standard deviation mean Kohendi, which is workbook number three, which I was working on. So just download those workbooks. It's absolutely free of cost. Okay. Now this is this download is a zip file. This is it. Uh, meta essential workbooks for meta analysis version 1.5. This is what you have to press, and and a zip file will start getting downloaded, and you'll get the. Uh, all the all the Excel sheets that I've shown. Is it clear? Is it clear? Ma'am, could you please share your email ID for further communication? Sure. Anybody who's writing a paper or research paper, uh, meta-analysis, I would be more than happy to collaborate. Uh, Readitmail.com. Okay, I have a LinkedIn ID also. If I could share that, give me a minute. I'll have to go to the net and show it. So... Yeah, so I I think you can find me on LinkedIn if it's by the name of Jaspreet Kaur, so you can all join LinkedIn. I'll, okay. I'll share with them on the WhatsApp group. I'll yeah. share. And I also have a group on Telegram, uh, which I think most of the, uh, I do not have um, even that you can join. So I think you can email to me and I'll, I'll give you all the details. So there's a telegram group which I've made where I had put up this workshop also. Uh, there's another workshop that I have on systematic review and meta-analysis, which is with Dr. Neeraj Kaushik. It's also free of cost. So, and I'm thankful to ma'am to allow all participants for, uh, it's, it's a very good thing that the college is doing, that the university is doing, ma'am. Applaudable, I mean. It's absolutely free of cost. You're bringing in uh, professionals and it's, it's really good, really applaudable for, for the researcher community. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, you are through. I think there are no more questions. So I think we can wind up. Uh, it is like ex we are extremely grateful to you. Like you could spare time and share your expertise in the this field, which is like very new, uh, not new, like, but we are not, pe we people are not familiar much with that. And there was so much to tell, I think so, because as looking at your uh, uh, CV, there are so many FDPs of, for five days and all material you have got. So it was very difficult, must be very difficult for you to compile it in within two hours. And uh, an online platform has always got its own uh, problem, like certain technical glitches, they do occur. But it is like we are on behalf of organizing team and Shivaji College, we are really grateful to you that you could spare time. I can know like uh, it is really like learn as if you are not reaching your goal but as if you were scared of missing it. So we were scared of missing it. So I, I think all of the participants, they were so interactive during your session and it is really uh, like uh, great of you to do that. And uh, in future also we will like to have and we'll, we'll plan it in a way like we can have two, three, like, like let it be your session the whole, at least for two, three days so that the, you have got so much to explain. And thank you so much, thank you so much. Doctor, uh, participants are requested to kindly fill up the feedback form, which is available in the chat box. And uh, Doctor uh, Renu, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Sure. Please, you can announce for the tomorrow's uh, uh, session. Yeah, sure. So tomorrow we will be starting around say two forty-five. I will share the message in a chat uh, in WhatsApp group. Apart from that, I have also shared in the chat box the prerequisite for uh, validatory session, which will also be hands-on by Professor Srinivasan Ramachandran. So may I request you, although of course you must have downloaded it, I have shared the information yesterday also. Apart from that, sir has also requested you to kindly select one, uh, uh, maybe a disease or any topic, any technique uh, for tomorrow's session along with the R studio. I think this is all which I wanted to discuss. Apart from that, uh, I uh, specifically mentioned in the beginning of this session regarding uh, uh, your uh, feedback, which uh, we would love to have your feedback for uh, future, uh, 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 you know, organization of these kind of workshop. So I request you to kindly share your feedback either in the form of pre-recorded video or if you want to share at that at that time, please let us know. You can give your name in whatever way you want to share. You can please mention. That's all, Sunita, ma'am. Uh, yeah, that's all, Renu. Uh, oh, then we... uh, if uh, anyone has any query, any doubt, anything you want us from 